Kaboom, and welcome to the Signature Spellbomb Memorial Day Special. This is Chad, and today we have a deck to thank the people who serve. All of our decks on this channel are built for the Oathbreaker format in mind. If you want to know more about Oathbreaker, please check out the link in the description, or visit the amazing community at the subreddit Oathbreaker underscore MTG for more information, including rules and bans. Today's special episode of the Oath Breakdown will be looking at a $30 deck tech. The cost of this deck includes shipping and the cost of our Oathbreaker. Shipping costs can vary greatly with many stores and sources being closed. Decks on this channel are built to be affordable, fun, and interactive for casual play in order to help new players join our format. Our special theme decks are not constrained to our usual power level requirements. On the Oath Breakdown, we break down the deck and build it back up so you can see how the deck works and how it was designed. Now let's get into it. Today's Oathbreaker deck is a thank you to the men and women serving our country. Since it would be impossible to do every branch of the military, today's episode will focus on the Air Force with an Air Force themed deck called Watch the Skies. This is a Dovin Grand Arbiter deck with Keep Watch as our signature spell. Dovin, the commander of our forces, is... A 3 Loyalty Planeswalker. His first ability is minus 1 until end of turn. Whenever a creature we control deals combat damage to a player, we put a Loyalty Counter on Dovin Grand Arbiter. Minus 1, create a 1-1 one -one Colorless Thropter Artifact Creature Token with Flying and gain 1 life. And minus 7, look at the top 10 cards of our library, put 3 of them into our hand, and the rest on the bottom of the library in a random order. Dovin's abilities are broken down clearly into military intelligence, unit creation, and planning and strategy. This will help us build our tactics for the future. Just as a good leader should do, Dovin supports our main game plan. Our signature spell is Keep Watch. It's a 3 mana cost instant with draw a card for each attacking creature. This is a great card for the deck because we'll be attacking with a bunch of tiny flyers. And it'll allow us to capitalize on our opponent's attacks sometimes. We're running this as our signature spell because it synergizes with our strategy and its value. Also, its quote is a statement of vigilance and remembrance on this solemn day. Now that we have our command zone card squared away, what's our game plan? Since Dovin gives us combat value and flyers, we are going to lean into it hard by building up an air force and taking to the skies. Our goal is to support our Air Force by antheming out like no tomorrow in order to turn little threats into powerhouses and protecting the skies and taking over the game with air superiority. Now on to the breakdown. In this section we are going to set up our deck to pay for our forces. Here is the military budget. Heraldic Banner enters the battlefield. We can choose a color. Creatures of the chosen color get plus one plus zero. Oh, and we can tap it to add one mana to the chosen color. This will help us play our creatures faster. Kefnet's Monument, a memorial to our creatures, makes our blue creature spells cost one less to cast, and whenever we cast any creature spell, we can tap a creature an opponent controls, and it doesn't untap during the next untap step. This is excellent because this allows us to control combat and keep some threats tapped down so they can't hurt us. But rather than trying to control combat, sometimes it's best to plan for the future, and we're going to do that in our next step, Military Intelligence. Fairy Seer, when it enters the battlefield, it's a 1-1 one -one with flying, it lets us scry 2, and that helps us set up our next couple draws as proper planning. Spectral Sailor has flash as a 1-1 one -one with flying, and if we play 3 in a blue, we can draw a card. This incidental card draw will help us, it's nice to have little draw engines if we have extra mana laying around. Night Veil Sprite, for 2 mana, has flying 1-2, and when it attacks, we get to surveil. Again, being able to look at our top card and decide if we put it there or we put it in the trash can allows us to control the future a little bit. It's just good planning. Kefnit the Mindful is a 5-5 flying indestructible god creature. He can't attack or block unless we have 7 cards in our hand. And his ability to pay 3 and a blue to draw a card and then return a land we control to our owner's hand will help us do this if we ever need a big attacker or blocker. Loyal Drake is a 2-2 flying creature with Lieutenant. At the beginning of combat on our turn, if we control our commander, we get to draw a card. This is great incidental value. And Bite Nefasa, whenever a creature we control deals combat damage to a player, we get to draw a card. Also, for one in a blue, we can tap it. And creatures our opponents control attack this turn if able, again, putting combat on our terms. 
Elite Guard Mage and Cloud Blazer are very similar when they enter the battlefield. Elite Guard Mage lets us gain 3 life and draw a card, and Elite Cloud Blazer lets us gain 2 life and draw 2 cards. Vespal Arc for 2 and a white is a 2-1 flying elemental creature. Whenever it leaves the battlefield, we can return target creature with power 1 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield. It also has Evoke for 1 and a white. Being able just to use this as a quick return spell is excellent, but it has limited value for us since we will be making our creatures big with anthems. Once we've kind of set up with our planning, now we need to properly maneuver in order to stay in the game in Evasive Maneuvers. Hypnotic Siren is a bestow creature. It's a 1-1 flyer, but if we enchant a creature with it, we gain control of it, and that creature will get plus 1 and plus 1 in flying. This is a great way to turn an enemy creature into a friendly, and then we can swing with it at our opponents. Judge's Familiar can be sacrificed to counter target instant or sorcery spell unless its controller pays 1, and Remorseful Cleric can be sacrificed and we get to exile all cards from target player's graveyards. These are great creatures for helping us with certain types of decks and certain types of problems that may arise as we play. Chinjali Sunwing is a 2-3 flying creature and creatures our opponents control enter the battlefield tapped. Again, this is going to put combat on our terms, just as our next creature will. Magus of the Moat says creatures without flying can't attack. This guarantees our air superiority is pretty hard to deal with and also protects us from being hit back. Dovin, the Hand of Control, is a 5 loyalty planeswalker that reads artifacts, instants, and sorcery spells your opponent's cast cost one more to cast. And minus one until your next turn prevent all damage that would be dealt to and dealt by target permanent and opponent controls. This taxing effect and this very limited fog effect can help us in strange situations. Teo the Shield Mage is a five loyalty planeswalker that gives us hexproof and makes it harder for our opponents to target us. And for minus two, he can give us a zero three blocker on the ground. He helps us fortify our positions. Uh, Disenchant will allow us to remove pesky artifacts or enchantments that may bog us down and keep us from attacking. And Negate will allow us to counter spells that may help an opponent storm off or otherwise win. Now on to some other removal. We have Generous Gift. It allows us to destroy any target permanent. And its controller will create a 3-3 green elephant creature token. This is often helpful for very problematic enchantments or planeswalkers that are keeping us from getting through. Oblation, we choose a target permanent, and that target permanent's owner is going to shuffle it into their library and draw two cards. In a pinch, we can use this to help ourselves, but mostly it's to get rid of things that are very hard for us to deal with. Depose and Deploy, the Depose side says we tap target creature and draw a card, getting us a little bit of value and getting maybe a blocker or attacker out of the way. And the Deploy side says, create two 1-1 one -one colorless Thraptor artifact creatures with flying, then you may gain one life for each creature you control. And this boost to our army and this boost to our life is welcomed in many games. But in order to win, we're going to need more than just a couple small flyers. Let's look at some more flyers in Small Squadron. Ornithropter costs us nothing to play and is a 0-2. Healer's Hawk is a 1-1 one -one flying lifelink creature. Sergovian Angel is a 1-1 one -one flying creature with Vigilance. Grateful Apparition, Guild Pack Informant, and Thrumming Bird are all flying creatures that will allow us to proliferate if we deal combat damage to a player. And Grateful Apparition and Guild Pack Informant will also get us that proliferate trigger if we hit a Planeswalker. This will help us get to Dovin Grand Arbiter's ultimate more often as we will need it uh, in some games to set up the future for us. Warkite Marauder reads, Whenever it attacks, target creature defending player controls loses all abilities and has its base power and toughness become 0-1 until end of turn. This is great for dealing with big threats that we don't want stopping our army. It also drops those threats out of the sky so they can't block. Skyship Plunderer is a 2-1 whenever it deals combat damage to a player. For each kind of counter on target permanent or player, we give that permanent or player another counter of that kind. This is again just another very limited proliferate style trigger. Now that we've set up some of our creatures and some of our abilities, let's get into how we make these creatures into big threats in singing the anthem. 
Favorable Winds is going to give all the creatures we control with flying plus one plus one. Always Watching is going to give non-creature tokens we control plus one plus one in Vigilance. Rally of Wings is an instant that says untap all creatures we control and creatures we control with flying get plus two plus two until end of turn. Next we have Infurion Eagle. It's flying and other creatures we control with flying get plus one plus one. Thunderclap Wyvern has Flash, and other creatures we control get plus one plus one. What's nice about that is it can be used as a limited combat trick to pump our army out of nowhere. Saphir the Skyblade, quite potentially the best anthem in the deck, allows us to give all our other creatures we control with flying indestructible. She costs four and three white, but we can actually play her for one white mana for willing to tap four untapped creatures we control with flying instead. Now that we've gone through all the cards in the deck, let's go on to the mana base. We are running an irrigated farmland. It can tap for a blue or white since it is a plains island and we can cycle it for two. We're running Tranquil Cove. When it comes into the battlefield tapped, we get to gain one life and it taps for a white or a blue. Then we're going to round out the rest of our deck with 11 islands and 8 plains. Before we get into the next step, I'd just like to take a second to talk about something extra. Since this is a Memorial Day special, I will be posting links to the Wounded Warrior Project and Soldiers Angels. If you want to help support our troops, please check out the links in the description. Now that we've done that, let's get into the price check. Just a quick reminder, our deck prices are based on the best available price on TCG Player at the time of recording, including the cost of shipping, but not basic lands. The average cost for a Dovin Grand Arbiter deck on Oathbreaker Wreck is $142.83. Our deck is going to be much lower at $25.24. If you want to see a breakdown of the deck cost, I will post a link in the description. And as this is a special theme deck, if you have the budget, there are some improvements you might want to consider. Put in a Curious Obsession and take out Fairy Seer. Add a Hope of Gearper and take out Vespal Arc. Put in Pride of the Clouds and take out Skyship Plunderer. Add Spell Quiller and take out Elite Guard Mage. And add Gravitational Shift and take out the Empyrean Eagle. Now that we've gone through the entire deck for this Memorial Day special, please comment below and tell us what you think. If you want to support the channel, please help us out by like, sharing, and subscribing. And if you want to show your signature spell bomb pride, check out our merchandise link in the description. Another option, if you want to support this channel directly, you can become a patron at patreon.com slash signature spell bomb. If you'd like to work with signature spell bomb, you can connect with us at any of the social media things listed here. And finally, I'd just like to once more thank all of our viewers. I can't do this without you, and I wouldn't. And now I'm off to Oathbreak another deck.